Imagine a treatment that doesn't just throw chemoid cancer, but reprograms your immune system so your own cells hunt tumors down more intelligently. That's the idea behind this new super adjuvant nanoparticle cancer vaccine. And a big part of this story is your body's built-in hit squad, natural killer cells and killer T cells. You've probably seen the headlines. Nanoparticle vaccine cures cancer in 80% of cases. The part they sometimes leave out. Those cases are mice in very controlled lab experiments. Still exciting, but very different from your uncle's pancreatic cancer is cured next year. But before we begin, and if you're new here, hi, I'm Dr. Tony Hampton, a board certified family and obesity medicine physician. And on this channel, we talk about metabolic health, low carb, keto, carnivore. And occasionally we stop and say, okay, what is this wild new cancer thing and does the mechanism make sense? I know many of you are vaccine skeptical. Some of you are completely done with shots after the last few years. I respect that. My job here is not to sign you up for a new injection. It's to help you understand how this kind of therapy works so you're not just reacting to headlines or politics. So let's talk mechanism. How does a tiny fat bubble, a nanoparticle, help your immune system fight cancer? First, the structure. This vaccine is built on a lipid nanoparticle. You can picture a microscopic bubble made of fat. Inside that bubble, the scientists pack three things. Number one, tumor antigens, pieces of protein from the cancer, or even whole killed tumor cells ground into a tumor smoothie. That's the mugshot. Number two, a sting agonist. This flips on the sting pathway, which is a sensor for DNA damage and viral-like danger signals inside immune cells. That pathway is famous for producing type 1 interferons, alarm molecules that wake up natural killer cells and T cells. Number three, a TLR4 agonist. That's like hitting a fire alarm on the outside of immune cells especially dendritic cells and macrophages. It cranks up nuclear factor kappa B, which drives inflammatory cytokines and co-stimulatory signals needed to fully activate T cells. When you inject this combo, those nanoparticles drain into the lymph nodes, where most of your immune decision-making happens. Dendritic cells swallow them, digest the tumor proteins, and put bits of those proteins on their surface like tiny wanted posters. Now here's where it gets fun mechanistically, because the sting and TLR4 agonists are inside the same nanoparticles as the tumor antigens. They're delivered together to the same dendritic cell at the same time. That cell sees danger signal and tumor protein simultaneously. So instead of yarning and ignoring the tumor, it goes into full drill sergeant mode. It upregulates major histocompatibility complex and co-stimulatory molecules. It secretes type 1 interferons, IL-12, and other cytokines that shape the immune response. And then it presents those tumor antigens to both CD8 killer T cells and CD4 helper T cells, training them to recognize cancer as the enemy. I know that's a lot of nerdy science, but necessary to get the point across. But let me simplify it a little bit by answering this question. Where do natural killer cells come in? Natural killer cells are part of your innate immune system. They don't need a perfect mugshot the way T cells do. They look for cells that feel wrong. Cells that have lost normal self signals, often because of viral infections or cancer. They're the bouncers at the door. If a cell isn't showing proper ID, it gets thrown out. The sting pathway is one of the big ways your body calls those bouncers in. When sting is activated inside immune cells, you get a surge of type 1 interferons and other signals like IL-15 that are very good at making natural killer cells more cytotoxic or better at killing, encouraging natural killer cells to migrate into the tumor microenvironment, supporting crosstalk between natural killer cells and dendritic cells so the T cells get even better training. In related pancreatic cancer models, this kind of sting TLR4 driven signaling has been associated with enhanced natural killer and CD8 T cell immunity against tumors, both in mice and in human samples. So the big idea is this. The nanoparticle doesn't just show your immune system a picture of the cancer. It turns up the volume on both the innate arm, NK cells, macrophages, etc., and the adaptive arm T cells at the same time. 
Natural killer cells act as the fast first responders, attacking stressed or abnormal tumor cells early. Killer T cells become the long-term precision-guided assassins that can remember that tumor signature for months or years. Helper T cells coordinate the whole orchestra, including natural killer cells, B cells, and other immune actors that support long-term surveillance. That's why they're calling this a super adjuvant nanoparticle platform. Co-delivering Sting and TLR4 agonists inside a nanoparticle creates synergistic signaling. NF kappa B plus IRF3, inflammatory cytokines plus interferons, leading to much stronger and more durable anti-tumor immunity than older, simpler vaccine designs. In the mouse experiments, that translated into around 88% of the vaccinated mice avoiding pancreatic tumors when challenged, strong protection against triple negative breast cancer and melanoma in similar models, and mice that resisted not only the initial tumor, but also metastatic spread to the lungs when cancer cells were injected later. But let's pump the brakes and talk about what this doesn't mean. It does not mean we cured 80% of human cancers. It means in carefully controlled mouse models with perfect timing and specific tumor lines, this NK and T cell supercharged vaccine platform prevented or dramatically slowed cancer growth. And we're still at the preclinical stage. From here, the path looks like this. More animal work to fine tune dosing, combinations and safety. Phase one human trials focused on safety and basic immune responses. Then larger phase two and and phase three trials asking the real questions. Do people live longer? Do tumors shrink or stay away? What are the side effects? A lot of therapies that look amazing in mice never make it through that gauntlet. Now, for my vaccine skeptical friends, how do we talk about this without blowing up the comment section? First, this is not a mass mandate situation. This is targeted high-risk oncology level medicine. This would be discussed between a person with cancer or very high risk and their oncology team. Very different context from you can't travel or work unless you get the shot. Second, being cautious about anything that powerfully stimulates the immune system is rational. These pathways sting, TLR4 are potent. If overactivated or used the wrong way, they can cause inflammation and autoimmunity. That's why we need human safety data transparent reporting, and independent replication. Third, nothing about this replaces root cause work. Cancer doesn't appear out of nowhere. It grows out of a soil that often includes insulin resistance and chronically high insulin, chronic inflammation, oxidative stress, and mitochondrial dysfunction, environmental exposures. That's the territory where low carb, keto, carnivore, sleep, stress work, movement, and community live. That's the part we can start on today without waiting for human data on a nanoparticle vaccine. If a tool like this eventually proves safe and effective, I see it as a fire extinguisher you hope you never need, but you're glad exists if the house is already on fire. Meanwhile, your metabolic choices decide how dry the wood is and how many gasoline cans are lying around the living room. So here's how I'd love you to foul this in your mind. Promising, mechanistically cool mouse science that harnesses natural killer cells and T cells in a more coordinated way. Something to keep an eye on, but not an excuse to ignore blood sugar, insulin, diet, sleep, and stress. Now tell me, if this kind of vaccine passed human trials, and look safe, would you ever consider it? What evidence would you want to see? And if you're ready to keep doing that daily work that's already proven, controlling your carbs, improving your metabolic health, and lowering your cancer risk from inside out, check the playlist in the description for more videos. Thank you for coming to this video, and I'll see you in the next one.